Okay. Uh, hello. I think we get started. Uh, my name is Matt Ranoste. Um, uh, thanks for coming to my talk. It's about industrial I/O subsystem uh, and how you can use it for uh, sensors and uh, um, other other applications. So uh, I've been a contributor to INO for about two years. Uh, pretty much any of the weird chemical sensors uh, have you seen on the list, uh, that that's me. Um, also pH, gas sensors. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the talk. I generally talk pretty fast, so yeah. So if, for those that don't know what the industrial IO subsystem is, it's, um, it's a subsystem mainly for sensors uh, that, that don't fit into um, hardware monitor subsystem, mainly stuff that's very high, high frequency updates, um, like ADCs. Uh, it, needs, it also has triggers, sampling, you know, like FIFO, also FIFO buffers. Um, uh, an advantage of using IIO, uh, instead of like uh, miscellaneous devices, uh, there's a stable ABI for uh, user space house. Uh, LibIO is, uh, is the official preferred one. Um, I have a demo later on using uh, Lib, LibIO, uh, uh, communicating to a, a digital uh, oximeter. Um, it's a simple API, of course, that's uh, an eye beholder, I guess, um, to uh, de each development of sensors. Uh, a lot of boilerplate code exists, and since most sensors are I2C or SPI, generally, uh, there's a lot of uh, reuse. And like I said, it only needs generally slight modifications. Uh, so basically, these are all mostly sensors, but there's a few things that aren't sensors uh, that actually have I.O. drivers. Uh, example would be potentiometers. There's a few of those. Um, DAX uh, and clock generators. Uh, these would generally end up in um, dev miscellaneous, but since the ABI there changes and it's like per device, it's better to use IIO. Um, also, Android devices have been slowly going from um, um, dev misc and dev uh, input, driver's input, uh, to using IIO. So uh, here's some of the examples um, of sensor types that uh, IIO um, uh, has support for, various drivers. Um, Accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometers, uh, a lot of IMU devices, um, a lot of temperature and uh, humidity devices, but that don't fit into a hardware monitor. Uh, basically, have high updates, like 100 hertz a second. Uh, otherwise, you should go into hardware monitor. Um, a lot of ambient light sensors, um, gesture sensors. So that's kind of like a thing that would normally go into input, but there's a lot of uh, high-speed uh, data coming off that needs processing in user space. Uh, some chemical sensors, um, health sensors, like my demo later on is oximeter. Yep. What's hardware monitor? Can you cover uh, well, that does coming up, but it's basically LM sensors that's using hardware monitors. So it's pretty limited to like humidity and tem temperature sensors inside of like a server chassis. Yeah. For IIO, you wouldn't use that. You would use it for something more like a thermocouple that has like a probe. It's, it can be updated really fast. Yeah. Uh, there's also some sen sensor hub code. Um, so here's a little overview that I'll go over. Uh, uh, is um, I/O channels, um, the triggers that you can use for I/O. Uh, there's software and hardware-based ones. Uh, the, the data buffers, uh, since these are since these are coming off a of SPI and ITC, uh, there's a good chance that uh, some data can get dropped. Uh, so this allows it to be gracefully dropped. So, um, since uh, if you lose it, you lose it, it's like from ADC um, data. Uh, also, there's single shot data access for like just temperature. You don't need to set up a buffer or any triggers to actually start reading. Uh, there's IO events for base, uh, for like. Um, uh, fall like a fall detection from an accelerometer from an accelerometer uh, from a phone, so you can have an interrupt. Uh, there's also I/O channel consumers, so other other devices, uh, other drivers, and, uh, and from different kernel subsystems can access I/O um, channels, which is useful for like battery chargers. You you get a voltage from an ADC, and you can you know um, tell it to stop charging uh, to increase charging. For users that need really low latencies, would you recommend channel consumers? Uh, well, it's 
it's it's it's not really. I mean, you can you can have triggers set up, but uh, it's it's more to keep it uh, more of a concise uh, API versus writing a one-off ADC driver. So, yeah. Did they answer your question or no? <laughs> uh, later on. <laughs> So, um, so basically, the I/O driver. Um, the steps is uh, you should really think: should the, can this be a hardware monitor driver? Because uh, on the list, generally, if there's no good reason, uh, you'll generally get rejected, and uh, you'll need to revise a hardware monitor. So, basically, anything that's doing a, an update every couple seconds or like once a second, that should not be uh, I/O driver for uh, temperature humidity sensors. Now, for anything else, uh, that, that could be debatable, but yeah. Uh, now you should also de de uh, deduce what uh, interface the chip is, if it's I2C, SPI, um, GPIO bit banging, there's a few of those temperature sensors. And uh, uh, also, should if you, you should use RegMap, or you should just do raw I2C or SPI reads. Generally, you shouldn't, but. And if there's any interrupt lines, uh, you can use that as a trigger for um, signaling to user space. There's data that needs to be read from the buffer. Uh, so that, can, that, that would be a hardware trigger example. Uh, software trigger, there's a high resolution uh, timer one. So you, you, basically, you, you can pull the sensor, which is using, but using HR uh, timer. So you can have kind of a deterministic uh, reading. That's what you use in lieu of an uh, interrupt line, or if you don't want to have like interrupt flooding. Uh, and also, another I/O driver can can trigger another uh, I/O driver. Um, just a few examples of that. Uh, also, ADCs generally should export they export their um, channels so other consumers can use it. Like example of a battery charger. Uh, single you should either single shot readings or there's a the triggered uh, um, KF, uh, KF uh, FIO uh, buffers. Uh, and should, you should determine if uh, this will need a new channel type. For instance, uh, IO, um, for the chemical sensors, we need to add IO pH uh, uh, channel modifier, oh, channel, channel type, and a few modifiers. Quick yeah. So, is the litmus test is it basically like the capability of the sensor? So, let's say your, your sensor is generating data at you know, two mega samples per second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you need the samples and a buffer uh, trigger really fast, if you're doing like single shot read only, you could probably just do hardware monitor. But that's only if it's a temperature or humidity sensor or something of something that goes into LM sensors effectively. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no there's no requirement to use the, uh, the um, you know the buffer itself. Uh, I don't think there's like a written rule, but I, if it's like over a couple of hertz, yeah, it's, it's kind of good. You should probably use I/O. Okay. Because otherwise, you're just pulling uh, CIFS entry, CIFS entry in uh, Harbor Mon, so that's generally a lot of latency. Yeah. So, like I said, so if the HM, uh, HMON sense, uh, subsystem doesn't subsystem doesn't fit into the sensor usage, uh, just like I said, typically low speed sensors. Um, yeah, use that. Otherwise, I/O is probably the best bet for you. Like I said, sense, if the sensor data needs to be deterministic, because you can't really um, know how long it's going to take to read from, you know, Sisyphus Itri, how what the timestamp is. Uh, I/O allows to have like a soft timestamp and a hard timestamp, a part of the sample, so you can kind, of, which is important for certain ADCs and uh, other applications. Uh, and also, it, it'll start dropping uh, samples so instead of trying to keep up uh, into the um, FIFO. So, the, so like if you lose ADC samples, it's you can't really you have to recover gracefully. So the best way is just just to ignore them. Uh, like I said, battery chargers. Uh, just an example of using uh, IIO. That's uh, so okay. So this is. Um, 
This is the struct that you, how you define channels. So ch a channel would be like one temperature uh, element or one humidity element, like or one uh, voltage, a couple of voltage elements for uh, ADC. So um, and the the naming is backwards compatible with hardware monitors. So it's so there's an advantage of that. Uh, so here's, as like I said, examples. Uh, there's uh, modifiers, type modifiers for wh what kind of data you want, temperature, humidity, like IIO temp. Uh, and also modifiers of, uh, on top of that. So, for instance, um, in the uh, for IO for concentration, uh, it has a modifier for CO2 gas and also for uh, volatile organic compounds to, to, uh, to, de uh, to allow you to know what what this channel actually means. Uh, and also, uh, there's a bit mask for uh, enumeration of the features. Um, so there's, generally you want to have the data sent out raw and the user space does the processing, but there's sometimes where that's not possible because there's some coefficient that's only valid then. So then you would do uh, IO channel info processed. Or if, the, de or if the, the raw data is in the right unit, for um, IIO and ABI. Uh, and there's usually, sometimes there's an offset value that's like from a data sheet, um, also a scaling value that you multiply the um, actual raw value by to get the actual result in user space. Uh, generally, the, the direction of the channels are inputs, uh, but there's a few example of outputs. Um, one is like a heater control for a humidity sensor. Uh, I think it's the only one currently, but they can be bidirectional. So, so these things have built-in scaling methods and all that? You generally get that from the data sheet of the sensor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you have a plug-in? Because that's not standard, right? No, no. That's, that's why you write an entirely different driver for, okay. for that, or you um, have a different like chip struct just for that one. What yeah. Uh, the filters generally you do that in user space, so you don't you don't want to touch that. That's that's why you generally do the stuff in raw and not uh, process unless you need to. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so here's an example of a, a channel structure that would you find an I/O driver. Um, so this is a thermal couple. Um, so the, the, you see the type uh, is a temperature. Um, the address is just kind of like internal. Uh, inter internal to the struct, it, it could be the address of, you know, I2C address or, I mean, I I2C uh, register, which I think in this case it's, this, it's a spy uh, offset. Um, then it's, it's, it's saying it's the, the mask is separate between, between this data type IO temperature, um, it's raw data, and there's a scaling value, uh, which you would find later in your driver in a, one function. And it tells you the scan index, which, uh, since generally this is a block of data, you need to know what 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 the, the data that's pushed to, um, to the buffer to user space, what offset in the in the data is that um, information, uh, and the scan type uh, says oh, the data is coming in that you need to process is a signed bit, uh, signed 14 uh, bit value, but it takes 16 bits of storage in the actual read. Um, so you need to shift it to, to the right. And it tells you the endiness, so you know which processing you need to do on uh, your CPU, if you need to change endiness or not. Uh, yeah, so here's the second channel. Um, it's kind of like, this is similar to the first one, but you notice there's a, a modifier. So uh, the ambient modifier, in this case, we use it for the cold junction temperature, since thermal couples have the probe temperature, and they also have the cold junction temperature. Um, it's not really useful, but it's nice to have. Uh, it's not really useful for user space to know that, but it's nice to have. So, and you can see that there's also uh, the uh, soft, um, soft timestamp, so it's not, it's just what the clock has at that time. Yeah. Uh, that's actually defined in the, a the ABIs, what, uh, the, what the raw value times the scale value, what that equals. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. The scaling, this, the scaling, the, the the scaling value should match to what to make it to it's every um, every data type the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, some of it's kind of arbitrary because like uh, it's middle of Celsius to, to be backwards compatible with a harbor monitor. Yeah, and yeah, it's all document. Whatever, whatever the ABI says. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a few different kind of triggers. Um, Hardware-based one um, could be GPIO uh, interrupt uh, or some other sort of hardware-based interrupt. Uh, the software-based ones, uh, there's a SysFS inch one, which is just echo one into a trigger. It's not really that useful. It's more for, for debugging. Uh, the HR timer, um, it's for ones that don't have interrupt line or if you just want to pull it at a certain interval. Uh, to have to have it be pushed into the buffer, uh, and triggers can be mapped to multiple devices. Uh, like in the example of HR timer can be used on multiple um, I/O devices, and uh, the, yes, they can send signals to each other, um, and also they can uh, yes with the I/O trigger pull call, and a driver can be a provider or a consumer of a of a trigger as well. Okay, so the buffers, um, the overview is the data is usually not processed, so, so channels need to have some configuration to describe a few points. That was the part in the, the, the struct before, the scan types. Um, so you need the storage size, the real size, uh, the left, uh, actually the right shifting of data. That's, yeah, it shouldn't be left shifting. Uh, the NDNS, um, so the buffer data is usually a, um, a raw read. It's past the user space, and it's up to the user space how to uh, decode it, uh, which libio uh, does for you. So the buffers are K FIFO backed, so um, stuff will start being dropped until you start reading from it again. Um, so the triggerable buffers from you know software hardware events as well. Uh, you can you can configure the uh, sample size for the for the buffer. Uh, it's got to be a power of two, I think. So how many samples you want? Um, there's per device buffers. So if it's there's triggered buffers and there's just uh, buffers that don't have triggers that are externally um, visible. Example will be uh, a device. Well, this doesn't have one because it, it's a FIFO that just gets interrupt and uh, pushes it into that. So you. There's no hard uh, HR timer support or anything that you can use. Uh, there's callback buffers. Um, this this allows um, I/O drivers to send data processed to another uh, driver. Uh, it's, I don't think it's really used except for like one one sensor, I think, because it's getting data from ADC and it's doing a conversion because uh, it, it has some configuration that it needed, if I remember correctly. Okay, so here's a here's a buffer uh, trigger handler. Um, so it's basically we have this is a GPIO. Let's see, no, no, actually, this is one of the HR timer ones. Um, so you set generally set the polling to 100 hertz, and so one 100 times a second, this gets called. Uh, so it gets a lidar measurement um, to the buffer, then it pushes it with a timestamp, um, soft timestamp. And it notifies user space that it's completed the trigger, so it can read. <coughs> and it notifies it's handled. Uh, single shot access, uh, in in the case of you can read um, the temperature and humidity directly, or the voltage of an ADC. But obviously, it's it's not deterministic when that happened, and it's generally not good to pull it. Uh, some some data can't be a single shot. Like for the examiner here, the, um, the ADC data doesn't mean anything to you if you're reading one sample. It, it's it's got to be deterministic, and it's got to be a ton of samples. Um, and sometimes you want to uh, list the secondary channels that have no real application, like the cold junction uh, temperature. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have it. So, and you have to read the entire uh, spy block for that chip, if I remember correctly. So you might as well tell what it is. Well, 
It could be, yeah, okay. But I'm just saying there's, I'm just saying there's examples where you don't need it at all though. Some, some, some sensors. Okay, so here's an example of a capture. So we got an IO device zero, which is, um, this is the thermocoupler. Uh, so there's the raw temperature from the probe. Uh, and there's uh, ambient temperature raw, and you can see the two scaling values. So, so yeah, you, you multiply to like 98 uh, by 250 and 416 by 62.5, and that gives you the mill Celsius reading there. So, yeah. So then you needed the conversion, obviously, divided by 1,000, and you have your unit in Celsius. And there's a few examples of units being this way because it's just backwards compatible with hardware monitor. You don't have to worry about floating points. Uh, there's an example of IO events that's usually um, used for like accelerometers for free fall interrupt you get, uh, or rising and falling of um, certain uh, direction inter uh, let me think, yeah, for like humidity sensors, there's, there's some uh, sensors that have uh, trip points uh, also. Um, they're different than the, the buffers because they don't come out, they don't come through a buffer, they, they're just uh, an ioctal event. Uh, yeah, so you need a, so user space application needs to uh, pull for it. Oh, yeah, and here's an example of uh, one. So there's a th threshold of rising, and uh, also there has a mass separate value uh, and enable. Okay, so I/O consumer channels. Um, so it, it, get, it allows a channel to be uh, it, it, it provides a channel that can be consumed by others uh, inside the kernel. So generally, eighty. Oh. Yeah. Well, when you're, when, if you're doing the processing like that in code, it's, it's better to do that in the user space. Yes, yeah. Okay, so the, the kernel does not support the eventing. Uh, I mean, you could, you could write the driver however you wanted, but it's just, you generally do the processing in user space. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have a, like a interrupt for like free fall or, okay. yeah. So uh, the consumers, uh, so there's some API calls uh, to read like ADC data. Um, so there's a channel read that reads it raw and uh, read process is generally what you wanna use because you don't necessarily know the scaling value of the ADC. Uh, so, uh, but that, rel that, that uh, relies on the ADC having its own uh, IO info channel process to do, this, to do the scaling to millivolts. Uh, and hardware monitor actually has a, a driver that can use the uh, IIO, um, an IIO uh, ADC for reporting, which and I like LM sensors. Uh, so yeah, scaling will be handled transparently. Um, yeah. So data, like I said, should be unprocessed um, when possible because that's not the part of the kernel uh, and. Um, to keep the time spent in uh, the kernel to a minimum in case there's another interrupt that happens. And also a lot of this stuff is floating point calculations, which obviously you can't do in the kernel. Uh, there's times when, like I said, channel uh, process is required because, uh, example, this, uh, the, this one, um, yeah, this, uh, the BMP 280 um, has a temperature coefficient that affects the humidity and the pressure um, readings, so you need to do a processing then. So uh, SI units are typically used. Uh, it depends uh, what's the, if it's like meters or centimeters. Um, uh, really depends on. I, th I think we yeah we use meters, but 
The example of weird ones would be uh, mil Celsius and millivolts that um, also ohms. So you kind of have to look at the ABI to make sure that your scaling values matches what uh, is in the ABI documentation. And that's documented, uh, yeah, in testing uh, SysFS plus IO. So there's a few utilities to, for mostly for debugging, but also to help. Um, list IO just basically lists all the available triggers, um, channels, uh, their types, and um, uh, what devices there are. Uh, there's an event monitor, uh, so you can you know, test your driver for free fall. Uh, generic buffer, so you can just read the raw data coming off the buffer, that, or you can have it processed uh, from a device's buffer. Yeah, so here's an example of an output. Um, thermocouple, um, and you can see you have the temperature raw that you can read, and the ambient raw you can read using a single shot uh, reading. Uh, and also there's a chemical sensor, so you can, in concentration, um, uh, and underscore input uh, backward compatible with hardware monitor. So that means that that information is processed. So that's the raw data. So that'll 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 come back in uh, parts per billion, if I remember correctly, for CO2 and uh, yeah. Also the resistance there. So here's an example of how you would set up a. a a buffer data capture. Uh, so you, so the uh, hardware type uh, software uh, trigger is actually config of, config of s uh, created. So you, you know make directory uh, with the true trigger name there, trigger zero. Uh, you can you can configure how many hertz you want, like how many updates a second. So did we set it to 50 in the the sampling frequency? Uh, then we uh, then we uh, echo trigger one to the that device to tell that's the current trigger we want to use. Uh, we we see we enable the scan elements we want to see. We want to see the temperature, the ambient temperature, and the timestamp. Uh, then we hit echo one to buffer enable, and that will start the sampling. And this is like this is the raw data. Uh, Depending on what scan elements you enable, uh, the padding will be different. So you have to take that into effect. Uh, so the, the, the last eight bytes there is a timestamp. Uh, the, the first uh, four are, yeah, the first four are the uh, actual temperature reading. And you would, you would use to scan the, 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 the data, the, the enumeration of um, how you need to shift it and what Indian it is. Um, yeah, and it's also padded to eight since the timestamp is eight. Uh, uh, not exactly. No, it's it's if if it'll if uh, KA FIFO you keep pushing to it, it'll 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 not add until you start removing stuff. So yeah, so here's an example of how you would process that data. So the stuff the stuff in bold. Uh, so you see that's uh, the index zero. Uh, the scan elements, uh, so that that tells you. Oh, so it's big Indian. Uh, so only 14, um, 14 bits of that is what we uh, actual doubt data, uh, but stored in 16. So shift shift over two. So that that gives you uh, 188 in hex. Uh, shifted over two, 98 um, times 250. Then you get your, that's the uh, scaled value, then that's in mil Celsius, so it's 24.5, so. Uh, so yeah, here's the generic buffer, so it's, it's um, a little more, f uh, it's doing the same, it's doing the same thing, but it's obviously more readable. So you can see uh, the 24, uh, you can s see the two first two numbers are the, uh, um, Temperature and the uh, cold junction temperature and the timestamp, the soft timestamp. Oh, okay. So I get to my demo here. So uh, I got a beagle bone. Um, 
uh, Xmeter chip, um, and I'm using a LibIO uh, uh, user space application, uh, actually over the network to my Mac. Uh, it's an IO daemon's running on it, so it basically allows you to uh, connect. It's, uh, it's the LibIO is OS agnostic, so you can use it from any system, Mac, Windows, Linux. The back end obviously isn't, it's obviously Linux. Uh, then I'll stream graphs with uh, the new plot. Probably not the best way, but so. Let's see if I can get this. Takes a while to load because it needs to do a baseline of. <clears throat> so right now this reading off the uh, two, uh, it's an ADC, but it has 18-bit ADC. It's reading um, the values off two LEDs, one infrared and one uh, red. The red ones for the heart rate, uh, the infrared ones for uh, doing a ratio to calculate blood oxygen. So the blood oxygen is about 99%, and the heart rate's about 42, which might not be correct, but, but the, yeah. Yeah, the problem is it's, uh, it's, it's doing a sampling, it's doing an averaging over like 20 seconds, so, and if I'm moving or talking, it changes it, so. Let's see if it averages out. Yeah. Okay, so that's probably more accurate there. Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. So yeah, here is in case it didn't work at all. So yeah, that's the dot dat, data plotted, plotted. Okay, so in conclusion, um, the industrial I.O. is a good uh, solution for as, fast updating sensors and giving data to user space. Um, there's really no limit to what I.O. can do sensor-wise. Uh, and it's much more stable than just using another miscellaneous uh, uh, driver. So uh, also patches welcomes, so. Anyone have any questions? Sure. Yeah, so there's there's a Python binding for obviously libio. Um, yes. So that's just the uh, that's just um, the the um, Data that keeps it keeps to the averaging, but as the buffer here is, um, let's see, let me just search for. So, so basically, it's looking for a network context. So I have it hard coded. Uh, it's finding a device which is defined already for the driver name. Uh, you could have an issue if there's multiple devices with the same name, but you would just use the IO device zero and or IO device one. Uh, we, enabling both both ADC channels, so it's zero and one. Uh, then got a function to read. And just reading it just sets up a buffer, uh, then it tells you how many it tells how many samples it wants before it returns. And Add to the buffer, then it just uh, does the averaging to display the um, chart. Yep. Uh, any more questions? Have you, is, so you said there's no, no other output devices currently besides maybe just one kind of oddball. Of, I didn't remember which one you said. But uh, yeah, just heating control for. Like, so what are people using? Oh, wait, uh, I'll take it back. The potentiometer is an output. Yeah, 
because uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's for configuration of the potentiometer. It's not that. So a digital, a digital potentiometer or something. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 echoing the ohm value you want, so it's an output. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and like, a, so like motor, <coughs> how are people doing motor control with IAO, or, or are they? I haven't heard of anyone doing it, so. Okay. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think I've heard. This is all done in user space. I'm trying to figure out the balance between user space and IAO, because I have a lot of users that just don't believe in using, uh, uh, even kernel drivers, they just try to do everything in user space, including accelerometers, hmm. um, gyros. Just want to do everything you <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so is it is it the DAC or that they're using control some of the stuff or for the motor control or uh, yeah, like, like um, they'll do memory mapped control of PWMs oh. to do um, so they control user space they're controlling drivers and user space yeah well, they're mapping the control registers of, of the, the PWMs and yeah. the, the <laughs> as well, memory mapping those, and then you know, just um, and doing IGC dev or to talk to IMUs rather than mm. using IAO to talk to IMUs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they're they're convinced that that gives them the lowest latency. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> There's no way it could. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and they, yeah. They, they've tried using the, um, the IAO drivers for the IMU and. and Which IMU? Uh, uh, MP that one's pretty well supported. I'm surprised they have an issue. And they're yeah, they're they're crunching the numbers, and they've got like a, a it's a it's a two millisecond uh, inner loop. Hmm. And um, doing quadcopter balancing stuff. <laughs> Sounds like there's something else at play there. I think. <laughs> In user space. Yeah. yeah. They are running RT preempt, but they don't record. They, they're, they're doing with just RT scheduling without RT preempt as well, and it still works. Hmm. Like their biggest, <laughs> like the, the, the two millisecond uh, loop, but the longest time period is the IAO read of the IMU, which is like over, like one, it's like around one and a half milliseconds. Uh, then there's, there's, the, there's probably a bug in the driver somewhere, the or yeah, case. yeah, yeah. Are they using a recent kernel or an old kernel? <laughs> uh, 4.4, oh. it's not, not, it's, it's, you know, not too new, but not too old. Hmm. So any more questions? Oh. You mentioned one of your early slides, sensor hubs. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, there's, there's microcontrollers effectively that, um, you know, basically do fusion code. They can read from multiple sensors. Uh, usually proprietary, so some of that stuff I really haven't looked into, but yeah. So it's it's more of a fusion code thing that's offloads um, having it on the CPU itself because this, a lot of that stuff is very CPU intensive if you're doing a ton of like 100 I2C reads a second or spy reads. Yeah. Yeah. You mean in software or in actual 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 sensor hubs? Yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's any use case for that right now. Uh, also, that goes into the you generally do that processing in user space, right. unless there's unless there's a reason to do it. Yeah, because you're not saving any CPU time uh, really. That is true, but uh, there's no plans for that. Yeah. Uh, what example that would? Hmm? Uh, is it just interrupt or? Yeah, you could just use like one of the. You could just use an interrupt uh, to trigger 
a reading. Because a lot of these sensors actually have uh, power management already support. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it's either it's in the sensor itself or it's in IIO doing it directly. Yeah, well, let's generally use the interrupts for that, but I, yes, I don't know how you would do that well, program. And the thing is, the smart sensor knows that it's just the same as the reach Okay. Uh, any more questions? What about sending information back to the sensor? Uh, you would generally it's device tree. I mean, if it's static, you use a device tree to. You know, right, what if it's not? Uh, well, that you, you can. Well, that's. I don't think it's actually come up to actually. Are we? What kind of data are you talking? Just. Just like writing one byte to I squared C register. Uh, you'd probably have to use the one of the RegMap interfaces, or but yeah, I I don't think I know any examples of that currently. Uh, yeah, uh, you, using PWM or using like an interrupt? Uh, well, you're not gonna have, it's not going to be deterministic, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you could, you couldn't deterministically de have a, you know, the, the, the pulse be correct. Uh, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I don't think, actually, yeah, I think analog devices has a few examples of, yeah, I don't know if they, I think it's a lot of that stuff's in staging, but yeah, 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 yeah. analog device is the one that actually did most of the uh, LibIO work, so. Uh, that's one way to do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, Sensor Hubs is basically a microcontroller, so yeah. Uh, any more questions? All right, thanks for coming.